Persons listening to this show should experience varying degrees of euphoria and might radiate a warm glow of truth from their entire being. This phenomenon sometimes lasts hours after a typical brain massage. If you are listening with another Lights On listener and they begin to glow, don't be concerned. This is a phenomenon normally associated with Pastor Scheidbach's patented brain massage technique and merely means the truth has set them free. The devil beware. Pastor Scheidbach is on the air. Hello, the Dr. Zen, pastor at the Lighthouse Baptist Church in Santa Maria, California, and your brain masseur, get ready for your brain massage. Mixed news coming out of Israel, BB wins, BB loses. The parliamentary system baffles us three times, I think it is. BB's Likud party came in second in terms of seats won, but ended up pulling together a coalition government so he could continue leading Israel. We'll have to wait and see if BB is able to pull it off again. It's not quite over, but the implications are serious and interesting to us because two things gave BB trouble, even though he presides over a booming economy. First, the scandals. Uh, he denies any wrongdoing. So far as I can ascertain, the evidence against him is circumstantial. But many in Israel today are in uh, the American progressive mood, and they're ready to go with guilty until proven innocent. You know, Kavanaugh. It's a wicked business, by the way, to attack Kavanaugh again in this vile way. Bibi is getting the Kavanaugh treatment, and the election suggests Israel is almost as evenly divided between right and left as America. So if Bibi loses, finally, it means false accusations persuaded enough Israeli voters, and that's going to encourage the Russiagate liars <laughs> that they can get rid of Trump with scandals founded upon lies. Don't let them do it. Second, the Arab voters are gaining significant influence in elections in Israel. So you have the double whammy there uh, of alien vote and ignorant vote uh, deciding elections in favor of liberal policies that will destroy the country. Now, we should learn from this an important lesson. The economy is not enough. We must defeat the lies and we must stop the illegal vote. We're in a major war in America. Biden said it. He said it's a war for the soul of the country. Now, there are few things Biden has ever said, I mean, that are comprehensible, <laughs> with which I would agree. But he certainly got that right. Many things look favorable for Trump to win in 2020. And we are hopeful the House will move back into the hands of conservatives. But it's not a given. A strong economy is not enough. We must answer the deluded lies of people who think it's okay for illegals to vote in our elections and who get away with outright lies and fraud to undermine a presidency. What you need to understand is that this is a spiritual war. The spiritual and the physical realms intersect and interact. The battle is won or lost in the spiritual realm and then realized and acted out in the physical. I explain all this in my new book, God's War, Why Christians Should Rule the World, a case for Christian involvement in every sphere of life on this planet. And that book is coming out very soon. The order's in. The books are scheduled to arrive in early November. And we have one year from then forward to get our message out to the remnant. And I hope you will help. Okay, my dear friends, it's time for your brain massage. Truth served here, flavored with delectable wit, succulent sagacity, luscious logic, a gourmet meal for the mind. My dear friends, we are at war. And the implications of this war include the loss of our liberties. So I'm going to offer a kind of summation of the message of my book, God's War, Why Christians Should Rule the World. Jesus is the king, and all mankind are his subjects. When I began writing God's War about six years ago, I thought that statement would assault the progressives' world with shock and awe. Since that time, the realization has crystallized in my mind that his followers are the best suited to rule his world. Put these statements together, and you can see why God's war rocks the world, my friends. Jesus is king, and his followers represent his authority in the earth today. And by the way, this is not some new idea. Our founders believed that Jesus is the only rightful king of the world, and that our republic could not continue unless Christians led it. I mean, we're talking George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, John Hancock, Patrick Henry, John Adams, Samuel Adams, Jay Adams, to name only a few. Virtually all the founders made statements effectively declaring their understanding that Jesus is the king and that all mankind are subject to his crown. They understood our liberties came from God and they repeatedly warned that our republic would not be safe except in the hands of Christian leadership. 
So they urged voters to vote for Christians. Now you'll see these quotations in my book, God's War, sprinkled here and there throughout. Look around. Look around the world. Everywhere Christians control the government and shape policy and influence the culture, you find liberty prevails. Where so-called secularists control the government, you see tyranny. Now that's only true with regard to the religion of Christianity, not, not Islam or the Hindu religion or any of the others, only Christianity. The more Christian a government is, the more freedoms it yields to its people. The less Christian, the more freedom is limited especially against Christians. And that's because, as the good book says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But wherever the spirit of Antichrist prevails, there is tyranny. Now, how did we, the people, forget something so basic? Satan has cleverly deceived us into believing the world belongs to him and to his servants. (laughs) But now, God's war blows his cover. Believers and unbelievers are blinking in the light of this truth. Jesus Christ is king. All mankind are subject to his crown, and Christians should rule the world. Evangelical Christians are looking for the return of our Lord, but few fully comprehend the significance of his first coming. It is summarized in the following stunning declaration. Jesus is king. Every human being is subject to his crown, and he has given the keys of the kingdom and the spirit of liberty to his followers. The implications of this statement are profound. God's war is the cosmic conflict between the kingdom of God and Satan's kingdom of darkness. It's fought on battleground earth, and the spoils of this war are the souls of men. Mighty angels and devils clash as on earth kingdoms rise and fall. Wars and rumors of wars rumble across the planet as one or another nation strives to gain control of something called the dominion. What's that? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He began by creating an audience, the angelic hosts. They watched and sang as he proceeded to expand space with billions of stars and planets and moons and comets. One world got special attention, and that was earth. He gave it to a mighty angel named Lucifer. Lucifer set his heart on his glory, his power, and his riches, all given to him by God, and turned his affections away from his benefactor to his own glory, and his heart Filled with pride, he announced his intention to set his throne above the stars of God and to be like the Most High. God rejected his prideful boast and cast him down. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So where did this darkness come from? Well, now you understand. God formed the earth to be inhabited by a new creature. Humankind was created male and female in the image and likeness of God and given the power to procreate, something angels cannot do. This is the kingdom of man, and God was its only king. He appointed to mankind mastery of the earth and all of its resources. And this is called the dominion held by the kingdom of men. You understand? God warned them that the wages of sin would be death. But Lucifer was outraged. He determined to remove the kingdom of man out from under God, to usurp God's place in the earth as God of the world, and to take control of the dominion. To do this, he seduced men into sin, gaining the power of death over mankind. And Lucifer came to be called Satan because he is the accuser. When our first parents fell into sin and came under the power of Satan, God promised to send a deliverer. Satan set out to seduce men to follow him in his rebellion. The first human to call himself a king out from under God was Nimrod. Before, God was the only king. Nimrod founded a kingdom called Babel, which later came to be called Babylon. And this was the first kingdom that was formed out from under God. God intervened and scattered the people. They followed Nimrod's example set up and set up kings and kingdoms all over the earth. Virtually all of them out from under God. Well, from that time forward, God would give the dominion, the right to rule the earth under God, to the king and kingdom of his choice. Well, he settled it on Israel. Israel became one nation under God. Well, Lucifer strove against God's angels and against God's people, Israel, in the attempt to provoke God, finally, to surrender Israel to his power and give him the dominion. Satan finally corrupted Israel so that God removed the dominion from her and gave it to a servant of God that ruled Babylon of all places, whose name was Nebuchadnezzar. 
Well, at that time, through the prophet Daniel, God foretold how the dominion would pass from one nation to the next until Satan had it all in his own hands. His prophecy revealed that during the fourth succession of the dominion, Satan would rule the earth through a king called the son of perdition, the man of sin, and so on. We call him Antichrist. Finally, the promised deliverer would come, destroy Satan's kingdom, and replace it with his eternal kingdom. Well, Satan's strategy is to destroy all of humanity before Christ can set up his kingdom on the earth. The prophecy began fulfillment when the dominion passed from Babylon to Persia, which was the second kingdom. Satan corrupted Babylon until God transferred the dominion to his shepherd, Cyrus, king of Persia. Satan corrupted Persia until God would no longer allow her to continue holding the dominion. But by this time, God did not have either a servant or a shepherd to whom he would give the dominion. So the next world ruler to rise was Alexander the Great, who called himself God, the son of Zeus. He was fully under the power of Satan, and God relinquished the dominion to Alexander, who brought the whole world under the power of Satan. And that's why during the temptation, Satan was able rightly to say, all the kingdoms of the world are given to me and to whomever I will give them. Satan needed a man to rule because the dominion was under mankind. All right, Satan knew the prophecy of Daniel. He expected his man of sin, someone we call the Antichrist, to appear at the beginning of the fourth kingdom. Satan would use his power to destroy all humanity. So he was watching for the prophesied Antichrist to appear, but something happened he didn't expect. God sent his son, the Christ, into the world, surprised the devils. Some of them said to Jesus, have you come to destroy us before the time? So it was untimely as far as their expectation was concerned. But the heir of the dominion arrived. Christ appeared in the flesh, alarming the kingdom of darkness. It meant that Christ Jesus could rule heaven as a son of God and earth as a son of man. Jesus could combine the kingdom of God with the kingdom of men. Thus, the kingdom of God invaded the kingdom of darkness to save the kingdom of men. You know, as soon as John the Baptist began declaring the kingdom of God had come, Satan rebelled through a fit, refused to yield the dominion to him. He refused to return the kingdoms of this world to God's power. Jesus bound Satan, spoiled his house, breaking his authority over all the kingdoms of the world, and removed the dominion from his control. But he went further than that. Jesus is the Christ of God in the flesh of men. He removed the dominion from Satan's power and banished the devil from earth so that Satan has no right to rule the earth or to hold humanity in his kingdom of darkness. It is not his. It belongs to Christ. Anyone who will is free to turn from darkness to light, to turn from the power of Satan to God. And that's repentance. Furthermore, Jesus removed the dominion from Adam's race. Oh, yeah. And took it into his own power as the son of man, the last Adam. Therefore, neither Satan nor sinners who are descended from Adam have any claim on the dominion. It belongs to Christ and to those who are joint heirs with him. Jesus is the king and all humanity are his subjects. After taking the dominion of earth from Satan and from sinners, he left his church with the keys of the kingdom, his authority in the earth to represent him, and he ascended into heaven to receive another kingdom that is not of this world. Well, he sent his spirit however, into the world to reprove this world of sin, righteousness, and judgment, and to draw all men to their only hope for salvation from the wrath that's coming. Under Christ's authority, we are instructed to preach the gospel of his kingdom to all mankind, declaring his terms of surrender. And the terms of surrender are as follows. We must confess that Jesus is Lord. That's key. We must believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. That's faith in a living Savior. And then we must call on his name to be saved. And that's it. All who surrender to the gospel, command to repent and believe, will be saved from the wrath that's coming. It's being delayed right now, giving you a chance to surrender. All who do so are called the children of obedience. Why? They obeyed the gospel. Those who refuse to obey the gospel are called the children of disobedience. Now, Jesus promised that he would return for the children of obedience, and after that, he will return with us. Meanwhile, Satan has reasserted his influence on the earth through the children of disobedience. Remember, in his banishment position, Satan is prince of the power of the air. He is the spirit, the Bible says, that now works in the children of disobedience. He deceives them, and many Christians too, by the way, into denying that Christ has come in the flesh. 
He convinces them that the earth belongs to Satan and that only they have the right to rule the dominion. They rail against God and his anointed. They declare they will not have Jesus to be their Lord. They will not have him to reign over them. These are under the control and influence of the spirit of Antichrist. Their objective is to bring the world under Satan's power to unite the world into a global dictatorship that will be ruled by Satan through the man of sin, the Antichrist. However, the Spirit of Jesus Christ in believers works through us to resist and to hold back the Spirit of Antichrist. This is God's war. The Spirit of Jesus Christ is the Spirit of liberty. The Spirit of Antichrist is the Spirit of tyranny. When the children of disobedience get their way, tyranny prevails. When the children of obedience are in control, liberty prevails. In every country where the children of obedience hold power, the gospel is preached freely because there's liberty. Where the gospel is preached freely, you will notice that all the people enjoy greater liberty. Where the gospel is restricted, you will see that all the people have their liberties denied, but especially Christians. All right, hold on to the break. I'll be right back. A lighthouse provides a guiding light through darkness. That's why the word lighthouse is in our name. Visit Lighthouse Baptist Church. Call 805-714-7731 or go to santamarialighthouse.org. Encounter God. The word means to meet, to experience, to confront. How would you like to encounter God? Maybe it's been a while since you've experienced God in a meaningful encounter. Renew your experience of God with a fresh encounter this year. Or maybe you've never experienced God and He doesn't seem real to you. You can encounter God and know that God is real. Call 805-714-7731. The Devil Beware. Pastor Scheibach is on the air. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. The brain massage show is about to go. Get ready. Your brain is about to get a massage. Hello, welcome back. I'm Dr. Scheidbach, pastor at the Lighthouse Baptist Church, your brain masseur and Paul Revere's lantern lighter. Lighting the lamps in the church belfry yard, singling the enemies on the march, an enemy that would steal from us our liberties. The current status of God's war in America is critical. Christians have given power over the government to children of disobedience. Now they are driving us out of this land of the free and home of the brave. A nation founded by Christians for the purpose of freedom to worship God according to the dictates of one's own conscience and that afforded to all men, well, that has been given to non-Christians who are now taking this liberty from us. God's war is raging in America right now. The battle is hot. 2020 will decide whether we continue as a nation under God or join the spirit of Antichrist and take this nation out from under God. We will choose between liberty or tyranny. The controversy between the children of obedience and the children of disobedience has reached a critical juncture. From our founding, the children of obedience, people in whom is the spirit of liberty, have held sway in the government and shaped our culture. Americans were renowned for their love of freedom. They made famous the principle that God has endowed inalienable rights to all humanity. To the degree that we have given control of our government to the children of disobedience, we are progressively losing our liberties. Hostility from the children of disobedience against the children of obedience has broken out into open and even physical violence. The upcoming election will determine whether we finally pull this nation out from under God or reestablish our nation under heaven's favor. The spirit of Antichrist convinces the minds of those it controls to believe Christians have no voice in the affairs of government when the reverse is true. Christians have as much right to voice their opinions on matters affecting the government as anyone else. Indeed, Christians have a greater right to govern in this world since the earth belongs to Jesus Christ and not to Satan. Now, God is the ordaining authority behind all government power. That brings every government power under God. The dominion belongs to Christ, the last Adam, and all who are born of his spirit are heirs of the dominion with him. Under his authority, we are commanded to preach the liberating gospel, and no power on earth has the authority to counter that command. Furthermore, every sinner is obliged to obey Christ as their king and commanded to bow the knee to him as Lord. Christians are kings and priests unto God now and responsible to represent God before men as kings 
and men before God as priests. Christians have the same human rights as anyone. We may engage in the politics of our government. What surprises many, however, is to learn that Christians have a divinely appointed responsibility to do so. Satan does not want men and women to know that he does not have the right to govern the earth over men. Any authority Lucifer gains in this world is usurped. The violent take the kingdom by force. It's never given to them. Unbelievers use violence to take the dominion and to hold it, but Christians have a divine right to rule the world under Christ. Heaven's current policy requires men to choose to surrender to Christ or not. Now, this policy will continue in force so long as Christ's spirit, the spirit of liberty, is present in the earth, withholding the spirit of Antichrist. But Christians will ultimately rule the world with Christ when he returns to the earth. And at that time, the wicked will have no choice in the matter. Now, however, men have a choice. They can accept the terms of surrender to King Jesus or join with those who declare they will not have Jesus reign over them. If they accept the terms of surrender, the spirit of liberty will prevail and govern them. If they reject Christ, then the spirit of Antichrist will prevail and tyrants will will oppress them. That's the story of the world since Christ came. The upcoming election in 2020 in America is a choice between the spirit of liberty and the spirit of tyranny, the spirit of Christ or the spirit of Antichrist. According to the Bible, people don't always choose their leaders wisely. Hosea complained that Israel had set up kings contrary to the will of God. Let's pray that Americans will elect leaders who follow biblical principles, who accept the terms of surrender to King Jesus, who are motivated and moved by the spirit of liberty. But we do not cast spells with our prayers. You understand that? God will not dismiss man's free will. Men must choose whom they will serve, and America is at the crossroads in that decision. Where do our prayers come in? Well, greater is the spirit of Jesus Christ in us than the spirit of Antichrist in them. What we want is a fair and honest election where people have an honest and legitimate choice. Christ Jesus gave us power over devils, and we can use our ability to restrain the influence of Satan in the upcoming election. We can pray that truth will prevail, and the people will be able to decide based on facts. We can pray that voter fraud will be exposed, and that it will not determine the outcome of our election. We can labor to preach the truth, and make it clear to our fellow Americans what is at stake. And what is at stake is freedom. We are choosing between liberty and tyranny in 2020. We are in a war for America. 2020 will decide whether we join the enemy of our liberty and and, and join those who are pulling this nation out from under God or stand with King Jesus. And if you don't vote, then you have voted for this nation to come out from under God. Jesus' spirit is the spirit of liberty. And he wants his spirit to flow through us like rivers of living water. His spirit moves through us to reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Believers release the flow of the spirit of God into the world when they pray, when they fast and pray, when they preach and declare the truth of God's word, and by this shine the light of truth on Satan's lies. If we perform our duty as light and salt, at least Americans will have a clear choice set before them. If America chooses the Democrat Party today, they will have chosen to side with the spirit of Antichrist. It is time for Christians to rise and take America back. The children of disobedience have undermined the founders' vision for this great country. They are assaulting our liberties daily. They have turned common sense upside down, opened the doors of our land to the pollutions of vice and evil, and pushed Christians out of public life. They parade perverse men and women before our children, advocating a dangerous and vile lifestyle. They are mocking our values and beliefs, and it's time that we have had enough. Political correctness is an affront to anybody's sense who who believes in liberty. Gender fluidity is nonsense, an affront to our natural sense. The assaults of the left are past insulting, beyond dumb, over the boundary of the far side of nonsense. It has become dangerous. The left today is dangerous, not only to our liberties, which is bad enough. The left has become vicious 
and they're raging against Christians. Stand up now or be silenced forever. We can no longer support church leaders who betray King Jesus and throw in with Satan and the spirit of Antichrist. Christ's soldiers must leave denominations that forsake the Bible and bow the knee to political correctness. They must do it now, or they are guilty of crimes against the kingdom of Christ. Now, he will render them their justice, but we must not support them in their betrayal. Christian soldiers must take the field of battle with the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. We must not back down when the children of disobedience bristle and rail against us with their scorn and vicious insults. Christ's ambassadors need to make their presence known at government forums. If the children of disobedience twist our words, untwist them. If they accuse us falsely, stand up against their accusations. If they misrepresent our beliefs, expose their lies. Killing babies in the wombs of their mothers is a travesty. It has come to its end. It's time for God's people to stand up for the lives of the unborn children, forcing our children to be exposed to the unnatural and life-endangering lifestyle of the homosexual. It's nonsense. Take our children back from these people who would pervert their souls. Our children do not belong to them. They cannot have our children. Enough. Now, I think you get the idea. We are soldiers, and it's time we take the field of battle and initiate. The enemy has been aggressively taking more and more territory in education, in politics, science, and entertainment. Christians have yielded so much place in this world to the devil. We are about to lose our place in it. It's time for Christians to stand and push back against the spirit of Antichrist and to reaffirm America as one nation under God. So get my new book, God's War, Why Christians Should Rule the World. By the way, over 30 full-color illustrations that help you grasp the more technical parts of the book. You'll learn the importance and power of fasting with prayer, how to deploy the sword of the Spirit effectively, you'll learn about spiritual warfare, and you'll be amazed to discover how Satan has tricked us into giving over territory to him that belongs to our king. And you will be stunned at how practical all of this is. This is not some ethereal treatise on how many angels dance on the head of a pen. This book gets down to cases. It's real. God's War. It's written so that the average but motivated reader can understand even the deeper insights uncovered between the covers of this amazing book. And your heart will be drawn in when you read that passage that describes the Garden of Gethsemane and Christ's battle there and his comments regarding the crucifixion profoundly moving. In other words, it's an enjoyable read. And it's full of powerful insights that will stimulate advanced thinkers and Bible students to ponder with amazement the clashing of the spiritual and the physical realms. In other words, it's also written with a scholar in view. It provides a topical and scripture index. These will help readers find the specific information they need or to find their way back to that intriguing insight they want to review. God's War includes appendices that allow the reader to examine more closely. Valuable insights touched on in the book. All of that with the promise of insights that will help you understand why America is in such a mess and the instruction necessary to save this sinking ship of state. America can be saved. God's War explains why we should and how to go about it. I have lit the lamps to the church belfry arch. Now you let me know you see they're on. Call 1-805-314-2114. Now leave a message for me on our listener response hotline. You can say, I want to order the book. We'll call you back and get you set up for that. Or you could go to our website, brainmassage.net, brainmassage.net. Email me and in the email, tell me you want to buy the book and I'll make arrangements for you to get it. You get a 25% discount for all pre-orders. So my dear friends, God bless you. God bless America. And I'll see you in church. A lighthouse provides a guiding light through darkness. That's why the word lighthouse is in our name. Visit Lighthouse Baptist Church. Call 805-714-7731 or go to santamarialighthouse.org. Encounter God. The word means to meet, to experience, to confront. How would you like to encounter God? Maybe it's been a while since you've experienced God in a meaningful encounter. Renew your experience of God with a fresh encounter this year. Or maybe you've never experienced God and He doesn't seem real to you. You can encounter God and know that God is real. Call 805-714-7731. Tune in Saturdays at noon and Sundays at 7 a.m.